Hi, everybody. I'm Trish Triampho Sullivan, and I'm here to talk to you today about our assignment number one in Photo One class. Woot! First assignment. Pretty exciting stuff. So I don't want you to do the assignment until we talk about it in class, but I'm going to give you the lecture about it so you understand what's happening. So we're going to start off with assignment number one. Um, write it on here. Assignment number one is reading light and lighting types. Okay, for this assignment, we're going to need, we're going to take nine images. Um, so there's, you'll be turning in nine images. And what you're going to do is you're going to take three images in three different types of light. So we've taught, we had a lecture about the different lighting types. So we're going to take um, three images in direct light. Okay. We're going to take three images in diffused light. And we're going to take three images in fill light. And remember, fill is plus direct. All right, you can't have fill light without direct light too. All right, so we've got, we're going to have three, okay, in each type of light. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do for this is we're going to do each of these three images are going to have three different exposures. So we're going to try to do one that's underexposed. So one will be under. Right. One will be correct exposure. One will be overexposed. Okay, whoops, it's a little crooked there. Um, so we'll have one each of these three exposures for each of the types of light, which will be a total of the nine images, right? So we're gonna do three images in direct, three images in diffused, and three images in fill light. Now, to start off with, so we'll end up with, with each of these, so the direct light will have an under, a correct, and an overexposed. Um, the diffused light will have an under, a correct, and an overexposed. And the fill light will have an under, correct, and overexposed as well. So we'll have the three different exposures in each type of light. And that's a really important thing so you can see how your camera works Okay, and you can see how, how the light affects the finished product, right? The finished uh, photograph. That's exciting stuff there, okay? Um, so let's see how we're gonna do this. So there's two different types of cameras that you guys have, right? You're gonna, you're gonna have either a or two main different types. You're either going to have a fully manual camera, right? So you're going to have a manual camera, right? or you're going to have an automatic, like a point and shoot camera, right? All right so you're either going to have this kind or this kind. Um, and I don't know, because obviously we're not in class together and I can't see your cameras, I don't know which camera each of you has. So if you have a camera that is an SLR 
or a DSLR, right, a, a uh, digital, I'm going to give you instructions first. So we'll talk first for manual camera people. For people who only have either a crossover camera or a point or a digital point and shoot, right, the, like the contact uh, compact digital we talked about, um, I'm going to give you different instructions. I want you to I want you to listen to this, the manual ones, but you're going to stay tuned for the automatic, okay? So manual camera would be an SLR, a single lens reflex, or a DSLR. So if you have a manual camera. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to start off with that sunny 16 rule, okay? And I want you to take these photographs either early morning or very late afternoon, like so the, the sun's still out, but it's low in the sky, okay? So the time of day is very important for the success of these. So either you're going to shoot these in early morning, okay, or late afternoon. And when I say late afternoon, I'm talking like six, seven o'clock, like this time of year, okay, which is, which is summertime. Um, so I want you to do early morning or late afternoon. And you're going to start off with your camera set for the Sunny 16, like we talked about in our lectures. Um, so Sunny 16 rule, if you remember, Sunny 16 rule says that you're going to have your aperture um, set at f16, right? That's your aperture. Okay. You're going to have your shutter set at 250, right? 1 250th of a second. That's your shutter. And you're going to make sure that your ISO is at 200. Right? That's your starting. And this is for a manual. SLR or DSLR camera, single lens reset flex camera. You're going to make sure that your little dial on the top of your um, on the top of your camera is set for M. Okay, M means manual, right? So it's very important you have it on manual setting. You don't want anything automatic. And I want you to check. There's usually a little switch on your lens that will say AF. Right or MF. We're going to make sure it's on MF. Okay, so MF means manual focus, which means it's not going to automatically focus. You're going to have to take your hand and focus your camera and focus your lens. Right, so you're going to you'll see a little switch on the lens usually that says AF or an MF. I want to make sure it stays on MF. So I want you guys to practice focusing um, by hand. Okay. Um, so this is how you're, this is your starting, this is your starting point, right? Your early morning or late afternoon, you're going to follow the sunny 16 rule, okay? Um, F16 aperture, 250 shutter, and 200 ISO. Okay, so keep that in mind because now we're going to move forward. Um, and, I, and how we're going to do this, how you're going to do these different exposures, okay, for your manual camera is... By changing the shutter speed, right? So remember, we talked about how changing one thing, you've got to change the other. The uh, if you change one, you have to change the aperture, right? If you change a the shutter, then you've got to compensate by changing the aperture. This time, we're not going to do that because I want to show you how just changing by one stop can make a huge difference in exposure. Okay? So starting off with that Sunny 16 rule, remember your your aperture. Is it f16 right your shutter is it 250 that's 1 250th of a second right depending on how your camera it might just say 250 it might say 1 over 250 okay and your ISO is going to be set at 200 right so what you're going to change is your shutter so the first photo that you take I want you to take with your shutter speed at 1 over 125, okay? The second image you're going to take at 1 over 250. That's going to be your correct exposure, right? And the third image you're going to take at 1 
over 500. Right? So you're gonna use three different shutter speeds to change the illumination, the amount of light coming into your camera. And you're gonna do this for every single type of light. <coughs> and you're gonna pick a subject that you can put out in the sun. And I want you to make sure that the sun, when, you, when you're outside, right, that the sun is coming kind of from the side. So right, if I have my friend Joe, uh, let's say, pose for me for this, um, or I take a, a, a little figurine or a Barbie doll or some kind of thing, any, any, pretty much anything, I've had students actually take photos of fire hydrants of all things, right? Um, you want the sun to come from the side. So if I have my friend posing here, right, the sun's gonna be hitting him on the side of the face, causing some pretty strong shadows on the other side of the face. So this, this side of the face is gonna be pretty much in shadow, right? And you're gonna have the sun coming from that direction. So the first set of three photographs, okay, the first set, you're gonna take in direct light. All right, so that's for the first, the first three. The second three, you're gonna do the exact same thing, except you're gonna take them in fill light. Okay, so fill light, I'm gonna have you use a reflector. And I'm gonna do a demo for this. So I'm gonna have a separate little short video with a demo so you'll be able to see exactly what we're doing and I'll show you on my camera how I set it, okay? Um, so here, you're gonna have a reflector on the other side of, uh, of your subject, whether it's a person or um, you know, a family member that will set, they'll pose for you. Um, or whether it's an object, okay? Um, you're gonna have a reflector so that the sunlight actually bounces off and onto the shadow side of the face or, the, or whatever the subject is, right? The shadow side of the subject. So that's gonna fill in that, that shadow and lighten it up so that there'll still be shadow but you'll be able to see the details inside the shadow, right? So you'll, you'll get to see the eyes and the mouth again, okay? And that's by either using a, say, a white sheet of paper or cardboard, or you can use the reflector from like a windshield. And like I said, I'm gonna do a demo so you'll get to see step-by-step step how to do it. So fill light for the second one, and then you'll take the same three photos, the same exact settings, the exact same thing for, for number two. So number three, you're gonna use diffused light. Right. So diffused, you're gonna have to do a little bit different. Instead of having the, um, the reflector over here, you're gonna move it to this side to block the sunlight and create shade. So in this case, you're gonna have what we call diffused light, and that's where light is coming from all different directions, right? And even though there's sun around, you're gonna see that there's no distinct shadows because the light's gonna come from all sides, okay? That's, that's where the diffused light. And for that setting, you may have to change your settings a little bit. So for this one, diffused only, Okay, I want you to change your shutter speed from, um, I want you to do one at um, 60, one over 60, one at one over 125, and one at one over um, 250. Okay, I can read that too, there we go. Um, so this, these settings here, Right, are for the first two types of light, direct and fill. Um, these settings here right, are for the diffused light. So make sure that you know the difference. Right? Write it down, take some notes, make sure that you know what you're, what you're gonna be doing for this, okay? That's for the manual camera. Now for the people who have point and shoot cameras or crossover can cameras, such as say a Canon Rebel, you're gonna use a different, different settings on your camera to achieve the same result. 
which is why I told you you can use any camera for this class because all of them have a way to change your settings. You just need to know how, okay? So I'm gonna erase this because this is for the manual camera and I'm gonna write, do another set of instructions for people with point and shoot cameras, okay? Or crossover cameras that don't have full manual settings. So this first set of instructions was for students that have cameras that have full manual settings on them, okay? Um, so <clears throat> if you have an automatic Um, and we'll, we'll put point and shoot because that's usually it. Or a crossover. Remember we talked about crossover cameras. They're usually cameras such as like a Canon Rebel that have some manual control but not complete manual control, okay? So these instructions for assignment number one um, are for those cameras. And so for those ones, I want you to look for your EV meter. It's either called an EV or an EC. And this stands for exposure. Value. Or exposure compensation. Now you're gonna have this on a manual camera too, but I don't want you to use it. I want you to use your manual controls. This is only if you have an automatic point and shoot camera and you can't, and you don't have manual controls, okay? I'll make that really clear for you guys. Um, so we have um, assignment number one, automatic point and shoot crossover. You're gonna use your EV meter or exposure value. You'll have to look in your menu probably or you might have an icon. Um, the icon usually looks something like this. There's a plus on one side and a minus on the other, right? And um, it'll usually be like black and white, kind of a little bit like a yin-yang symbol, except it's not a yin-yang, right? It's a, usually a square that has this kind of plus and minus on it. And it might, it might say EV or EC next to it or near it. Or you might have to, you might be a button or it might be something where you have to go into your menu and find it. Usually you're gonna see it, it's gonna look something like this. You have a zero in the middle. Um, oops. You've got plus two on one side and minus two on the other. And usually minus one and plus one. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna change these settings. So your three photographs for each type of light are gonna be using the EV meter or, or exposure value meter, um, and you're gonna change these settings. So your three settings for all three photographs are gonna consist of one photograph with a setting at zero, right? One photograph with the setting One photograph with a setting at minus two, and one photograph with a setting at plus two. Right. And you're gonna use this meter to change on your camera. Um, and I'll try to show you an example of that when I do the live demo, okay? So here we go for your automatic settings. So for each type of light, direct, Fill and diffused. You're going to take three photographs with these settings. Okay. These are called a bracket, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, but you're going to use 333 for a total.